Next, we're going to go ahead and try to force our way into a user space process and check whether or not it's return, whether its code is non-executable or whether its stack is non-executable. You would expect the code to be executable and hopefully the stack is non-executable. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, you have to first open Notepad inside of your VM. I already have it open, so if you don't, then go ahead and continue your debugger and then go open Notepad. But since I have Notepad open, then I want to search for it. So bang process 00, zero notepad.exe. And this is going to then search the process list for the kernel information about notepad.exe. All right, and eventually that information will show up. And so it says, you know, here is the information about notepad.exe. This is what we're looking for. This is what's called the eProcess structure, but it just calls it process here. So we're going to take that data structure and we are going to run dot process and slash i slash p and then that process address. So slash i slash p and then the address of that process data structure. When we do that, the i says invasive. And so it's basically saying we invasively want to force our context to be that particular process. So it says the kernel debugger says you need to continue and then the context will be switched and then it'll break back out. So we would hit G to go and continue. And then it goes ahead and it breaks back again. So if we did thing process negative one and we're gonna do F so that it prints out. So actually, before we do that, I need to do a dot reload slash F. So I need to reload the kernel debug symbols and everything else so that in the context of this notepad process, we get the symbols for this user space process as well. All right, after the symbols are done reloading, then we're going to do bang process negative one, and we're actually gonna do hex F for the flags here so that it gives us the sort of bunch of flags, including the thread state. So this will print out all sorts of information about the various kernel, or sorry, the various stack traces of the different threads. So there you see the information scrolling by. We're gonna let this complete and then we're going to walk our way back up through these threads and we're gonna look for one that has notepad in the back trace. So if we look here, we can see that there's no notepad anywhere in this particular back trace. Go up to the next one, no notepad found here. And I just know that in general, it tends to be the, the first one up here. So too far. There we go right here. Here is notepad in the backtrace. So we want to focus on this line and we want to look at the addresses for both its stack. So this first field, this first column is the child stack pointer and the second column is the return address. So we basically want to find out the for the page tables of both the stack and the uh, uh, code address, are they executable? So I'm gonna do bang PTE. I just copied both of them so that I don't have to scroll back up again. So then I'm just gonna do this. This is gonna be the stack and bang PTE. This is gonna be the code. So what do we see? Well, we see non-executable for the stack and we see executable for the code, which is exactly what we would expect. So we've successfully forced our way into the user space notepad.exe process and we've examined the stack and the executable section, and we found that as hoped for, Microsoft Windows is using the NX bit, the XD bit, in order to mark the stack non-executable.